A while back, I posted a lesson on shell voicings, which are three note chords that sound especially nice in jazz and blues. That lesson focused on chords with roots on the fifth and sixth strings. This lesson focuses on shell voicings with roots on strings three and four. Before we get into these shell voicings, I'm gonna go over just a bit of theory to help you understand how the different shell voicings relate to each other. If you've already seen my other video or you just wanna to get to the shapes, skip right ahead. Most chords are built on notes stacked in thirds. Here's a C major scale. The notes are numbered below by scale degree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. From C to E, we count three notes. C, D, E, one, two, three. C and E are a third apart. From E to G, we count three notes. E, F, G, one, two, three. E and G are a third apart. And from G to B, you count, you guessed it, three notes. G, A, B, one, two, three. G and B are a third apart. We can stack these notes up. We'll start with C, which we're going to call the root note because this is the note we're using to build our chord. We stack an E on top of that, and now we have a root and a third. We're calling this E the third of the chord because we're relating it to the C scale. E is the third note of the C major scale. Then we stack a G on top of that, and we're calling this G the fifth of the chord because again, we're relating this chord back to the C major scale, and G is the fifth note of the C scale. And finally, we stack a B on top of all that. We're calling this B the seventh of the chord. And what we have now is a type of seventh chord with a root, third, fifth, and a seventh. In this case, we have a C major seven chord. Of all the notes in a seventh chord, the fifth of the chord is the least necessary. We can remove the fifth from a seventh chord and it still has the most essential notes of that chord. And what we're left with is a shell voicing, the root, the third, and the seventh. Most of the shell voicings you'll play will include the root, third, and the seventh, but some will include other notes like a sixth instead of a seventh, and three types of chords in this video will include a fifth, and we're going to talk about those as we get to them. We have just one more thing to talk about before we look at these shell voicings, and that is the labels. Each part of the chord is labeled with R for root, three for the third of the chord, and seven for the seventh of the chord. Sometimes you'll see just a plain number, like a three or a seven, and sometimes you'll see a flat or sharp in front of a number, like a flat three or a flat seven. The numbers show how each note relates to the root of the chord. More specifically, the numbers show how the notes relate to the root of the chord as if that root were the start of a major scale. For example, here's that C major seven chord. It has a root, the C, a third, the E, and a seventh, that B. We label the E and the B as three and seven because they are the third and seventh notes of a C major scale. Here's a C minor seven chord. This chord also has a root, the C, a flat three, the E flat, and a flat seven, the B flat. The E from the C major scale has been lowered and the B has also been lowered. And that's why you'll sometimes see a flat or sharp in the fretboard labels. And now the shell voicings. This series of notes has a root on the fourth string, a third on the third string, which is going to be a major third, and then some other note on the second string. The root and the third are constant here. It's that moving note on the second string that completes the chord. So if I play this root, third, and fifth, I have an F major chord because my root note is on the F, string four, fret three. This is one of those shell voicings that does include the fifth. Major triads have a root, third, and fifth, no seventh. Now if I change that note on the second string to the sharp five, I have an augmented triad. Move it again, I have a major six chord, which you would label as an F6 in this case. Move to the flat seven, I have a dominant seven chord, which you would label as F7. 
And if I move that second string note one fret higher, I have an F major seven. And if I move it again, I have another very uncomfortable F major chord. But this time, instead of having a root third and fifth, I have a root third and another root on the top, which is a little hard to reach. Here's that entire sequence. Major, augmented, major six, dominant seven, major seven, and a very stretchy major chord. Keep in mind that these are all movable shapes. We called these all F chords because we played F as the root note. If we move our root note two frets higher, this would be a sequence of G chords. So to use these shapes, you need to know the fretboard. And if you need some help with that, I've got some fretboard knowledge videos linked in the description. This next series has the same root on the fourth string, the same row of notes on the second string, but now we're playing a minor third or a flat three on the third string. The root and the flat three are constant. It's those notes on the second string that change the chord quality. And again, these are all movable. I'm calling these all F type chords because I'm playing F as my root note, but you can move to any root note on the fourth string. So if I play this root flat three and five, I have an F minor chord. And this chord does include the fifth because a minor triad has a root flat three and a five. It does not include a seventh. Change that fifth to a flat six. I now have a minor flat six chord. Move it again. I have a minor six chord. This minor six chord can also be called a diminished seven. Remember with these shell voicings, we're taking certain notes out of the chord. In this case, the one note that makes a difference between a minor six chord and a diminished seven chord is missing. So depending on context, the listener will perceive this as either a minor six chord or a diminished seven chord. Now, if I move to the flat seven, I have a minor seven chord. Now, a nice thing about this minor seven shell voicing is that you can also play it as a minor seven flat five chord. Remember that for a lot of these shell voicings, we're playing the root, the third, and the seventh. We are not playing the fifth. So the one note that makes a difference between a minor seven chord and a minor seven flat five chord, that fifth is missing. So you can get away with playing this minor seven shell voicing in place of a minor seven flat five. Now, if I move our second string note one fret higher, I have an F minor major seven, which is a bit of a stretch. And theoretically, if my pinky were about two inches longer, I could move that second string note and play another F minor triad, playing a root flat three and another root at the top. Here's that entire sequence. Minor, minor with a flat six, minor six, or diminished seven, depending on context, minor seven, or minor seven flat five, depending on context, minor with a major seven, and then that theoretical minor with a root, flat three, and another root. Now we have a root on the third string, a third on the second string, this is our major third, and then some other note on the first string. Again, the root in the third will stay constant and we move that note on the first string around to change the chord quality. And these will all be different types of B flat chords, but again, you can move the root up and down the string. So check out those fretboard knowledge videos linked in the description if you need some help in this area. So if I play this root third and fifth, I have a B flat major chord. And this major triad includes the root third and fifth, does not have a seventh. If I change that upper note to a sharp five, I have an augmented triad. Move it again, I have a major six chord, which you would label as B flat six. If I move to the flat seven, we have a dominant seven chord labeled as a B flat seven. Move it again, I now have a B flat major seven. Move it one more time, I have another B flat major chord, this time playing the root, the third, and another root. And here's that entire sequence. Major, augmented, major six, dominant seven, major seven, 
and another major chord. This last series has the same third string root, and the row of notes on the first string is the same. But now on the second string, we have a flat three or minor third. As usual, it's the root and the flat three that are constant. It's that note on the first string that completes the chord. So if I play this root, flat three, and five, I have a B flat minor chord. And again, you could move this to any root note on the third string. Change that note to a flat six, I have a minor flat six. Move it again, I have a minor six chord. And again, depending on the musical context, you could call this either a B flat minor six or a B flat diminished seven. Move to the flat seven, I have a minor seven chord. And just like the fourth string shell voicing we looked at, you can play this minor seven shell, shell voicing in place of a minor seven flat five. If we move our first string note one fret higher, we've got a B flat minor, major seven. And if I move it again, we have another very stretchy B flat minor chord playing the root, flat three, and another root. Here's that entire sequence. Minor, minor with a flat six, minor six, or diminished seven, depending on context. Minor seven, or minor seven flat five, depending on context minor with a major seven, and then another minor chord. Shell voicings are tied into fretboard knowledge, and if you need some help with that, I've got a free PDF you can download called Learning the Fretboard. I'll leave a link for that in the description. If you're looking for a systematic approach to shell voicings, check out my book, Three Note Jazz Guitar Chords. I'll leave a link for that in the description as well. And for more guitar lessons, music theory, and solo guitar arrangements, please subscribe. Thank you.